Welcome everyone to today's webinar on the topic of IoT edge computing, the sensor and controller edge, market trends and cost of optimization opportunities. This webinar is co-presented by IoT Analytics and Bosch. A few housekeeping items before we get started. This webinar will last uh, an hour and we will have a moderated Q&A in the last 15 minutes. All dial-in participants are muted. Uh, we have for the Q&A, you can ask questions at any time, starting now uh, in the Q&A section by pushing the Q&A button. If you have any problems, send us a message on the chat. Uh, a replay of the webinar will be made available to all attendants, and at the end we will ask for your uh, feedback to see what we can do better next time. Today's speaker, so my name is Knut lasse -Lüth. I am the CEO and founder here at IoT Analytics, and I've been looking at uh, IoT topics for the last 10 plus years. With me today from Bosch is Kai Hackbart. He's the business owner and OTA strategist at Bosch IO, and he brings 20 years of IoT experience. He's very active in organizations such as OSGI Alliance and the Industrial Internet Consortium. He will be joined by Joshua Rückert, uh, who is a Bosch IoT Suite consultant, and he also has five plus years of working on IoT and supporting different customers on their IoT journey. Very quickly about IoT analytics, in case you haven't heard about us before, we help companies understand the market dynamics for Internet of Things and Industry 4.0. Um, IoT Analytics typically has two types of products. We publish reports, uh, market reports. We do a lot of end user adoption reports where we survey end users and databases, sizing and forecasts. At the same time, we perform research services with our clients on specific topics such as go to market strategies and other consulting engagements. Edge computing is one of the topics that we have uh, have and, and are covering. Uh, and so the agenda for uh, today for the webinar, um, we want to start with the evolution and definition of the IoT edge, then get into the market overview and trends. Then I'll hand it over to Josua and Kai from Bosch for their approach to IoT edge, as well as two in-depth case studies on connected car and connected industrial assets, uh, followed by an outlook, and then we will jump into the Q&A section. So let's get started. Uh, Edge computing has been a massive trend for the last three and a half years. I mean, I really, in, in the research we do, I love to look at Google trends just from a public opinion. And some of these things, you see them plateauing, but edge computing is one of those that is just accelerating the writing, I would say. So it's a, it's a real big hype topic. Um, and the question is, what, what then is edge computing? The way we define I, edge computing is, edge computing is a term used to describe intelligent computational resources located close to the source of data consumption or generation. So it's, it's, what's important to note here is close to the source of data consumption or generation. We'll get into that in a second. There's different types of how close you are. And the other part is about intelligent, because uh, you could argue with this. If it's not intelligent, you could argue whatever we did 40 years ago with edge computing, and some people would uh, call it that way. But we think there is an element of um, being non-proprietary, being open, uh, and, and, and allowing for third-party applications and things like that for things to become more intelligent. So if you look at the spectrum, um, there's cloud, there's edge. We actually classify three types of edges. We say there's a thick edge, thin edge, and a micro edge. Uh, on the cloud side, there's national data centers, there's regional data centers, there's local data centers. If you look at a sample architecture here, um, you can kind of see there's computation in the cloud, and then that then gets broken down all the way to whatever devices you're connecting on the IoT side. Um, but if you look at the different edges, um, and there's various definitions out there, this is kind of our IoT analytics consensus view of what we're hearing and seeing. There is the uh, everything that happens around the cell tower data centers, in case there is some cell connection, uh, on-premise data centers, computers, networking equipment, and now we go further down to the controllers, the sensors, and the devices. And what's characterizing these things is typically two things. One is the distance from the data source. So is it very close? And in, in, the, in, the, in the case of sensors and devices, uh, sometimes this is less than a millimeter. Uh, in the case of cloud, this can be miles away. And the other thing that is kind of uh, in sync with that is the latency. So you can get less than 0.1 of a millisecond on the, on the sensor device level, 
versus if you're in the cloud, you can normally not achieve anything better than uh, 10 millisecond latency. So this is kind of defining the different types of edges that we're talking about. And now today we will have a focus on the bottom part. That's why we call the, the um, webinar the controller and sensor uh, edge. We'll, we'll, might, we might touch on some of the others as well. I want to just want to make sure um, we're not talking about 5G edge computing today or similar things like that, which could also be classified as edge computing for IoT. Um, we're rather talking a little bit further out on the edge. Uh, I also want to make uh, you aware that we have another webinar in two weeks where we will cover number two, three, and four on premise data centers and computers. I'll share a link at the end of the webinar uh, if, if you haven't signed up for that and you're interested in it. Let's get back to that uh, Google Trends chart that I showed earlier. Uh, a question then is why is this taking off so much and what's what's actually happen, happening there on a, on a high level? I think um, from our point of view, one thing that's been happening and it's always happening, compute gets better. Like you can do more compute in a smaller fashion. So uh, even though some people argue Moore's law, which has kind of been defining computing for years is dead, uh, compute performance is improving. Uh, another very interesting uh, uh, trend in the last five years or so has been hardware as a service. So instead of um, purchasing very expensive equipment, IT equipment uh, as a CapEx, uh, it's now been offered as an OPEX, so you can have infrastructure as a service uh, in different, in various ways, not necessarily only in the public cloud. But uh, as you're now seeing that proliferate, um, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a very important driver of edge. Uh, with that, virtualization technologies, meaning you can abstract uh, the, har the, the hardware towards software. You can, you can have different parts of software virtualizations of the edge. Containerization, something with obviously tools like uh, Kubernetes uh, uh, that have been around now for uh, eight, nine years, but, but really uh, in the last three years have, have been, uh, we've, we've seen wide adoption of these in, in different IoT projects and, and so on. Uh, the cloud providers such as AWS, Microsoft in 2017 really started offering IoT Edge components, which have now become core parts of their offerings. Uh, so the cloud and the edge can be seamlessly connected. Uh, we're seeing new hardware at the edge, uh, for example, for AI, AI chips, neural processing units, TPUs, other innovations to enable uh, AI, AI at the edge and hardware-based security. So that is another thing that's seen a massive um, improvement. Uh, security obviously is top of mind for a lot of people, has been for a few years, um, but uh, there's been a lot of innovation and in secure enclaves and, and other hardware-based security options. Open source is becoming more of a thing. Um, I mean, here you can see 2080, Microsoft purchased GitHub. Uh, there's a lot of companies that are kind of um, making a, a clear push and, and Bosch, by the way, is very active in, in open and open source as well. Uh, you'll hear more about that later today. Uh, and then uh, the integration of real-time operating systems and cloud. Uh, you've seen, recently seen acquisitions from all the cloud players in the real-time operating system space to make it more seamless. And last but not least, um, low latency wireless. So everything 5G, Wi-Fi 6, uh, you have new types of, of wireless protocols that allow for lower latency, and that at the end again drives more edge deployments, edge to cloud. Let's have a look at the market overview and, and, and trends. So uh, what we do at IoT Analytics, we kind of take a look at different markets. This is a high-level view of how we look at global spending on enterprise IoT technologies. Um, so this is a triple digit billion market in our view, uh, obviously right now affected by Corona, um, still growing in our view. Uh, and um, we'll get to that later in the outlook as well. We believe there's a lot of signs that this is uh, going to be accelerating again from 2021 onwards. The intelligent edge plays a, an important role in there. Uh, and the so hardware, software and services related to intelligent edge, we estimate to be at around 22 billion in 2019. And you can see that this is uh, uh, going to grow quite quickly. One of the surveys, so, so I, I want to dive a little bit deeper now into different, different topics. And one of the surveys we did uh, earlier, actually end of last year, so it's pre-corona, um, 
with manufacturers. And this uh, was to look at different manufacturing technologies and to understand what's the ROI of these. So we looked at the amortization of different technologies. You can see uh, manufacturing in the manufacturing space, and obviously edge computing goes beyond manufacturing, but this was a specifically a manufacturing survey. Um, topics such as machine vision, digital twin, uh, uh, and a few others were ranked as amortizing the quickest. And edge computing really came out at the in the in the bottom uh, third, if if you want, um, showing that. The, it doesn't actually amortize that quickly. Now, I think from, from a research point of view, this is somewhat logical because edge computing is more of a um, infrastructure investment for the future and you don't necessarily um, uh, have, a, have, have a very clear use case against it immediately. You have maybe plenty of use cases against it. And uh, so, so it's more of a strategic investment. But it's, nonetheless, it shows that edge computing uh, needs to be uh, regarded as a as a cost from a cost point of view you need to be very very clear of what does it actually bring and that's one of the reasons why we called the webinar cost optimization opportunities and uh, Yozo and Kai will share from their point as well how they think um, this is possible to to save costs with edge computing if you then double click on edge computing and and I realize this is a slightly different pyramid than what I showed earlier because it's based on a, on a slightly different survey that we did. Um, but we asked people, where in the next five years do you expect the workloads to be? And what you see here is the increase, people that said it, the workloads in public cloud increase versus those that think that it decreases. So when you look at, when you look at the data, you can clearly see the share of workloads that you're seeing in this pyramid, people expect to be obviously shifting to the cloud, but also expecting to shift uh, to the edge even more so, especially to the far edge. Uh, and there's plenty of um, co plenty of, of comments that we've heard why that is. So I'm just reading a couple of, of, of the um, points that people had. As the capacities of the networks expand, most of the workloads will be performed in the cloud. In the future, AI, ML will utilize more public cloud services. Cloud is going to get cheaper. Uh, at the same time, on the bottom here, sensors, devices get more connected and smaller. Simple tasks will be performed on board. Uh, traditional non-art uh, real-time critical OT equipment will be replaced by direct sensor connection to cloud. Uh, and IoT smarter devices will take share from PLCs. This is, this is what different um, senior executives in various industries are telling us when we ask them, how is this picture shifting? So I want to, we said controller and sensor edge is kind of our um, deep dive here. And I want to share, on each of these, I want to share one trend and one current challenge from our current research that we're doing on this topic. So we're currently uh, doing an industrial edge computing report, which is probably due out in, in two weeks. Uh, and a couple of trends that we looked at there. One of the trends on the controller level that we're seeing is that controllers are moving from pro proprietary real-time operating system to more open operating systems. And one of the examples we have here, and I, I had a, um, I talked to a um, representative from Bosch Rexroad uh, um, a year ago at, at the SBS uh, where they were showing it, is Bosch Rexroad has a very innovative uh, concept called Control, Control X, where they essentially shifted everything to an Ubuntu type Linux uh, making it open, uh, and this is kind of their new uh, controller uh, uh, future. And, and you're seeing more and more follow in, this, in the same um, kind of pattern. One of the challenges uh, that we're witnessing is managing workloads on a single piece of hardware. So we're talking about making these things more open, and there's more applications jumping onto these onto these controllers. But then that also means you need to manage them. Some are real-time critical, some are not, and so managing prioritizing becomes an issue. Two strategies that we're seeing is A, uh, testing and pre-approving applications that run on the controllers is something that we're starting to see. So this means pre-certifying specific applications just to make sure that they, everything is in sync. And the other, the other topic is about um, using hypervisors, which is a specific uh, type of software to allocate compute resources uh, accordingly. So that's that's two of the things we're seeing there. And again, I'm sharing one trend, one challenge. We have a lot more in, in, in our research, but I 
thought I'd pull out a few uh, that I wanted to share with you in today's webinar. If we look one level deeper on the sensor and device level, uh, one of the things that we're seeing is streamlined ship to cloud connectivity. So we're seeing right now a lot of uh, these a hey, chip company partnering up with cloud company and trying to uh, build up an architecture that makes it very easy to connect the chips to the cloud. So an example here is Google and Microchip uh, that have recently announced a partnership. One of the challenges we're seeing on the sensor device level is uh, security and provisioning and connecting sensors securely. So uh, um, this has always been a problem, but more devices tend to get more constrained. You go more further towards the edge. And so you can't put all your heavy security tools on there. Plus there are numerous new solutions, both either hardware-based or software-based. And so um, really getting this right is not easy. One comment here, we recently heard uh, from an industrial IoT system integrator that says, all our production deployments utilize state-of-the-art hardware security modules and that is usually orchestrated on their AWS instance. So again, so this is just a snippet. Um, at this point, I want to hand over to Yuzua from Bosch uh, to, so he can share, his, share the view of Bosch towards the IoT edge. And I'll come back uh, and discuss the outlook later on. So let me just quickly unshare my screen. And Yuzua, the stage is yours. Perfect. So I hope everybody can hear me and also see my screen now. So also warm welcome um, from my side. So yeah, my name is Joshua and all, as already introduced, so I work for Bosch IO as an IoT suite consultant. And actually, before we now move on with our topic of edge computing, um, it's my great pleasure to share with you a very exciting fact because actually today it's September 23rd and this is actually the birthday of August Robert Bosch. And I think this is really worth enough to also quickly be mentioned here in this webinar. And uh, maybe there are also some facts you didn't know about him. So for example, um, maybe that he, his first name was August and he has just founded um, the Robert Bosch company at the age of, age of uh, 25. And I think this is very impressive and even more if we think how the Bosch company has grown over the years in so many different industries. And yeah, I think even today Bosch is a very successful global player and um, yeah, in so many different aspects of life. And so also we, we do in the IoT and edge computing. And um, this is exactly what brings us also back to, to our topic. But um, yeah, after this side fact, let's move on with our topic of today. So first of all, thanks a lot, Knut, for the very interesting insights to your latest researches and thoughts on the current market situation. I think from my perspective, we have, we have seen now that edge computing plays a huge role and it also offers huge possibilities. But I really think on the other hand, we also see that companies are facing uh, different kind of challenges, right? When it comes to, for example, the question on their return on investment. So. Now, before we also deep dive a little bit more on our edge approach, let's maybe first have a look on some different roles and also to the different perspectives, which of course, I think it must be considered when thinking about edge computing in your, in your company or in your project. So I also guess that we have a very mixed audience here today in, in the call. So, and really I think edge computing is, is nothing that is just a topic for, for the technical side, but I think it, it rather must be considered um, also from a business point of view when thinking about an IoT solution or when you get started with, with your project. And here you can see some different roles. Um, and I think all of them have maybe different questions and challenges. So starting maybe from a business perspective, you might ask the question where in general the technology is going and how you can actually use it in your solution. So the question would be, how can edge computing as a technology really help, for example, to increase customer satisfaction, um, for example, with a better customer care? Or also, we have the question on the other side, how we can maybe cut down the project costs by reducing the costs on the infrastructure side. So. Moving on, we have a technical manager who ha might has also the challenge to screen the market and he really needs to find the solutions um, that best fits to the project and all the requirements for different kinds of devices maybe. 
Uh, we have the hardware and system engineers who then in the end, they need to deal actually day by day with the software. And this, um, of course, can be smooth or it can be very complex. And also this can have an impact to efforts and costs. And um, yeah, we also have the embedded engineers who need to find the right software architecture for that different kind of platforms and different types of devices. And yeah, you even need to find um, a software that is lightweight enough to also maybe connect the small devices and to connect the unconnected. And you really see by that, that there are a lot of challenges and questions also when it comes to edge computing in 2020. And I think this is also the reason why we are coming up with our new edge approach. So before we but come to, to this new edge approach, let's make it a little bit more clear in the end about which edge we are talking about. So I think we already have learned in the first part of the webinar that edge is really not equal edge. And it's even more like a different edge devices from very thick to micro, they come together, right? And I think nowadays the deployment of IoT devices at a, at a scale really requires a flexibility on the one hand side, but as well, you, you um, need this coverage across this range of devices. So looking on the left-hand side and the picture, so you have all these different kind of devices, like more complex, powerful edge nodes to even the small sensors and microcontrollers. And as already mentioned, so for the small ones, you even need to find a lightweight component um, that you can install on those small um, um, microcontrollers. And in this scenario, actually, of different platforms and different devices, uh, you still then need to find a way to um, do this device management, to take care for the software management. And also then when it comes to data management, um, you really need to easily and fast get the access to the data directly at the edge. And um, of course, you also then want to maybe use your local compute power and really to reduce maybe your cloud costs so you don't have to, to pay it for it, um, for example, in the cloud. And also then for security reasons, of course, there are, there are a lot of use cases where it definitely makes sense to keep your data locally and kind of decentralized stored directly at the edge. But now coming to the other side, so and looking on the available solutions, I think it's really hard maybe to find a solution that fits it all and to meet all of those requirements. And um, yeah, thanks. some things you definitely maybe need to consider is some heavy integration work that needs to be done. Um, this can also then lead to high operations costs or in the end um, to a delayed go-to market. Uh, if your software kind of is limited to a certain platform, of course, this could also maybe prevent you to combine the several type of devices or, or it can get very, very complex to orchestrate the different kind of software, which also could be very costly. And also when it comes then for to um, programming frameworks, you might be limited at all maybe to realize a certain use case or the, the framework, framework you are forced to be used is maybe not the one that really fits to your needs. And I think, yeah, there are even more hurdles to overcome when thinking about edge computing. But however, um, this is exactly uh, where we want to help with our new edge approach. So um, in the end, our overall goal is by that to give you really the control over the edge, which means with we have open and lightweight components, uh, which can be then flexible, also applied to the different kind of platforms. And so you really benefit from a fast integration on the one hand side, but also from that reduced complexity on the other side. In addition to that, we have this um, container-based technology, really giving you the freedom then to, to use the best possible framework for your use case and to realize your project. And I think putting all of this together with this offering, you'll find a strong package uh, to retrieve your efforts on the one hand side, but really also to empower your edge approach. And now let's move on and let's have a look how it looks like and how the Bosch IoT suite provides all that kind of components you would need. So some of you maybe have heard about the Bosch IoT suite with its different components. And for those who haven't seen it before, let me maybe quickly explain just the different parts of it. So the Bosch IoT suite is an open IoT platform, and it's really developed and designed in the end to give you a scalable IoT toolbox to really realize your scaling IoT business model. And it exists out of different components, like you can see here on the slide. Um, we have the Bosch IoT hub, which represents the cloud connectivity and communication layer. 
On top of that, we have Wash IoT Things, which is the so-called digital twin service to manage and control your devices or to forward device data to other applications. So you can also see it on the slide. You can also use direct the APIs from there. And in addition to that, the platform comes with even more device management capabilities like the Bosch IoT Manager for device operations at a larger scale. And we have Bosch IoT rollouts that really helps you to secure and fast manage your software updates. Now, below that cloud services, you can see the overall architecture of our new Edge offerings. So in the end, Bosch IoT Edge provides all the tools and all the services to connect um, any device to the cloud. So this is the first thing um, to set up a communication between the devices and really to develop IoT applications across the different platforms, across different languages and also um, system requirements. So let's have a look at those components. So first we have the Edge agent and below that we have more Edge management software and other Edge applications that can be really operated and also developed independently from each other. And this really gives you a lot of flexibility. So coming back first to the Bosch IoT Edge agent, I think this really brings the, let's say, the essential IoT enablement features that are so lightweight and really ensure then a secure cloud connectivity. And this thing was really designed to, to be used for the diverse edge platforms. So you can now natively connect a really a wide range of edge devices and platforms from the small microcontrollers up to gateways to more powerful edge nodes by using MQTT. And this really makes it very easy and flexible to use, I think. On the other side, we have the Bosch IoT Edge services, maybe also formerly known as the Bosch Gateway Software which then offers the diverse device connectivity features. And next to it, we have this more advanced edge computing services that then help to bring connectivity on the one hand side. And we have intelligence at the edge on the other side. And what this means in the end, by pushing intelligence to the device, you can realize different kind of business models and end-to-end -end scenarios starting from from contact connectivity and data collection, I think this is really the baseline. But then you can also realize things like software and device management up to yeah, even more complex analytic stuff or for example, um, yeah, machine learning capabilities. Now looking at this containerization, which was also named by, by IoT analytics as well as by Machination as a key enabling technology for edge computing, it really allows you an isolation between the um, edge application and edge management software, which means that you can really develop application, let's say using the most fit for purpose programming languages and frameworks. And on the other side, you have your secure device management software um, yeah, just captured from each other. And um, another great benefit I think here um, is to, if you have, for example, a modern and containerized application, which you run nowadays in the cloud with this container approach, um, it's easy to, to do this shift from the cloud maybe to the edge without heavy um, development costs. So this is really um, a huge benefit from my perspective. Now, coming back um, again to the different kind of edge devices. Well, here on that slide, this picture, actually again shows the wide range of edge devices from thick to micro with very different capabilities, right? So, um, and I think today we most often are talking about gateways or bigger microcontrollers with, um, yeah, with, with, with their capabilities. But I think with the new architecture, we really can target a larger spectrum of edge devices and in the end, giving you the freedom kind of using the same technology for all kinds of devices. Like you can see, on the slide, for the small microcontrollers, you can also use uh, the Edge agent to just enable this cloud connectivity. And if you have some powerful, more powerful devices, you can then also go further and you can do more with the Bosch IoT Edge services on other applications you can just put into your container. And this really uh, empowers your, your Edge use cases. Now, to really sum it up, and before we move on with some hands-on use cases, I think we have now learned that edge computing is really not only a trend, but it also offers huge benefits for, for any IoT solution. And um, coming back to the cost consideration, I think some studies already show that, okay, by using or moving intelligence and business logic to the edge, 
you can reduce your cloud traffic, your compute power in the cloud, and you can maybe reduce your costs by up to 50%, depending on your use case. This could be, of course, it could be a lot of money. But I think also when we talk about edge computing, there are even some more direct and indirect impacts um, to the question of costs and also then to their return on investments, right? So, of course, um, I think a fast integration, a fast prototyping really helps then to accelerate your developments and also to avoid um, heavy integration works. I think also the, the container-based approach gives you really the freedom to use the most fitting and, and well-known programming frameworks. And I think this not only makes maybe your developers happy or you as a developer, but I think it also ensures that you can use the best frameworks to really realize and fast realize a certain use case. And one of the biggest things also, um, and what I like is really the platform agnostic development and flexibility across all kinds of hardware options you might find out there. And I think this is really a huge leverage and um, it really enables synergies and also an advanced interoperability. And even when it comes then also to security aspects, I think there are several things to be considered, like um, you need to manage your software updates to really secure your, sol uh, so your solutions and your devices. And also the thing that you can have your applications isolated from each other really ensures a secure operation. Well, um, all, by all of this being said, so I, I ho really hope that I could give you a valuable insight um, to some considerations when, when it comes to edge computing and also for, for the cost um, con considerations. I also, of course, hope that you have gained some deeper insights to the Bosch IoT suite and also to what we think about edge and our edge approach. And I will now hand over to my colleague Kai and Kai will show us some more practical examples of how the Bosch IoT technology is being used in several domains. And Kai, I look forward to what you will tell us today. All right. Um, thank you, um, Josua. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Kai Hackbart. I'm business owner industrial at Bosch IO. And in our team, we deal uh, with various kinds of um, yeah, projects um, with different types of edge devices, different types of edge um, solutions, um, also for different um, use cases. And I want to share with you um, two case studies um, that uh, we have been uh, working on. Um, next. Yeah. All right, so um, starting uh, with an architecture, and I would say an example architecture for edge computing in automotive. Um, the car today, you could uh, consider it as an IoT device or a moving edge, um, has a lot of software inside already. Um, and um, I, I recently or we recently had a, a webinar on software over the air updates um, where we were also talking about how this works for cars. And um, so I was uh, mentioning that uh, the amount of source code you have in, in a car today, if you would print it on A4 pages, it is as high as uh, Burj Al Khalifa in, in Dubai, the currently tallest building. Um, and, and obviously this is not running in, in one uh, system. So there are various uh, uh, control units um, uh, within the vehicle that have different types of functionalities that also vary in type of uh, compute power um, they provide. Um, and um, you see this let's say in, in different domains, uh, uh, similarly that things are more and more distributed. Yeah? Um, so here again, just an example, we have the IoT edge uh, stack in, in a car gateway or what we call here connectivity control unit. You have a, an operating system obviously um, and the edge stack then uh, runs on it. Um, we have um, different uh, types of functionalities here. For example, we, we have uh, functionalities for providing photo updates into the vehicle, uh, for localizing the car, for um, having an emergency call uh, a notification or to do diagnostics within the car. Um, 
So this unit obviously um, is, is just one subsystem, if you want, that uh, connects to um, the entire uh, yeah, uh, um, system, I mean, car environment, if you want. Um, there are uh, ECUs, as we call them, electronic control units for like the engine control, for back control. They they have also um, yeah software in it um, that uh, also needs to be updated or that will be updated in the future. Um, and um, yeah, so the the point here is really that uh, even here um, or for this type of devices with the new edge architecture, we can provide a. a piece of uh, functionality that allows us to perform these sort of uh, firmware updates, for example. Yeah, um, And yeah, so on the on the back end side, just to, to mention this for completeness, um, this is basically from where these uh, software updates or even device management operations are provisioned. Um, but that's not really, uh, I would say, in the focus uh, for today's uh, webinar. Um, next slide, please, or next. Um, okay, so the first case study is um, about uh, something we uh, did in cooperation with uh, RTI and Xilinx, um, and it was part of uh, an activity uh, within the uh, Industrial Internet Consortium over the Air Special Interest Group. Um, and it was um, about making firmware updates on FPGA. Um, um, yeah, modules, if you want. Um, so RTI is uh, a provider for uh, DDS uh, technology, um, which is coming now into vehicles for especially uh, autonomous cars. And Xilinx is a system on a chip vendor that is providing um, FPGAs. Next. Um, yeah, so I was mentioning already that uh, there are many, many subsystems uh, within the car um, that each uh, need to be able to receive uh, software updates. This can be done in, in, in various ways. Um, but um, the point being here is uh, a car OEM needs to be able to push this into a repository from where um, it can be pushed into the vehicles. And, and the reason um, that this is important, especially with um, view to the future is, if we think about autonomous uh, cars, uh, electric cars, uh, we get even more um, software into the vehicle and, and um, um, it, you basically have artificial intelligence in the car um, that can autonomously act on certain events. Um, and these uh, artificial intelligence models, they uh, will be improved um, over time. And, and they will be certainly more frequently improved than we do software updates in, in vehicles today. Um, and as you can see, this is um, all uh, interconnected. Yeah, so it, it's um, a rather complex uh, environment today. Next, please. Um, so the, the case study we did uh, with RTI and Xilinx is um, about enabling um, um, to connect a, a Xilinx Ultra 96 port you see here on the right hand side um, with, with uh, in this case, it's just a webcam, but it could also be, uh, um, um, let's say something that is uh, mounted in the vehicle. I mean, we will have more cameras in the vehicles, lighter sensors and so on. Um, and and what, uh, the, the, what we wanted to do here really is to stream video um, from um, the camera to another system within the vehicle um, that again is a, a Xilinx board, again, an FPGA. Um, that runs, uh, or that basically visualizes the video stream. Um, and um, DDS, uh, which is uh, um, yeah, an, an, an OASIS uh, standard, uh, you find this already in industrial environments a lot, um, is becoming the standard for um, in-vehicle communication, if you want, especially with, uh, with um, view on autonomous cars, right? So data, I mean, 
you want to ensure that uh, data is processed in real time, that you have uh, service level agreements or that you can comply with server level agreements. Um, and, and DDS is, is, is realizing this already today and in various environments. Um, again, so here we, we stream video from the camera um, um, to another uh, board. Um, we basically just visualize this. And you see on the on the left uh, in the left box um, that we have this Bosch IoT Edge agent uh, running, yeah, um, and left of it the Bosch IoT Suite, um, from where we can actually push software updates into the uh, Xilinx uh, Zinc board. Um, it um, performs um, the software update here. And, and um, then we can add, uh, for example, new functionality. Um, obviously, this is uh, you know, rather simplified here. Um, you could imagine this uh, far more complex. Um, in the next slide, um, what we're going to show is, uh, okay, so um, that with the software update, we are now able to recognize recognize uh, um, objects. Yeah, and, and uh, taking uh, again cars as an example um, with autonomous cars, we want to recognize if, uh, for example, if there is a bicycle, a child, or any kind of object in front of us. Yeah, and then the car should, for example, reduce the speed or uh, brake or um, do certain certain actions. Then, yeah. Um, and again, um, this can be uh, uh, made more complex. Yeah, so you could um, do further updates and, uh, for example, recognize even more uh, kinds of details. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, so this will be sort of crucial um, for for uh, with view to autonomous uh, vehicles. Yeah. Um, that edge technology allows you to, to perform these sort of updates and uh, the new edge agent uh, then uh, allows us to, to target um, these uh, yeah, uh, sort of small microcontrollers as uh, Yuzua mentioned it in, in his previous slide. Um, um, yeah, thank you. Uh, next. So here we are now talking about uh, large engine uh, manufacturers and uh, what I want to point out here uh, when you come from an IoT company or even other domains um, where yeah, we are rather digital already today, uh, large engine manufacturers and also their customers are sort of in I would call it in a, in a digital stone age as of today. Um, so they, they basically ship engines, they, they lose um, um, connectivity um, to the engines. And um, this is uh, uh, you know, yeah, rather uh, difficult now for them um, to, to, um, to remotely uh, manage uh, fleets of, of, of uh, yeah, connected engines and so on. Um, so point being here, um, we help these large engine manufacturer in their digital transformation and, and they in uh, return also have their customers. This could be uh, shipping uh, uh, manufacturers, this could be um, manufacturers of these sort of uh, construction vehicles, or this could be also in industrial environments. Um, the engines are, as I said, uh, usually remote, um, not easy to reach. Um, doing software updates um, today is, yeah, I mean, sort of impossible if you want, or it's very costly because you need to um, send somebody uh, in the worst case via airplane um, yeah, to the location where the, the engine is, uh, is located. Um, so they cannot remotely introduce new features over time, right? Um, so that's uh, another uh, challenge they are facing. Um, they did not yet really have the concept of uh, introducing um, yeah, digital services uh, for condition monitoring, for um, maintenance uh, services and these sort of things. 
Um, so what we did here really is to provide an end-to-end -end offering that includes gateway hardware, um, the edge uh, uh, software components, as well as a backend and um, security components. Um, we enable um, asset management, and by this we mean uh, provisioning um, of new uh, assets in the field. Um, we can uh, enable the health monitoring, so you can get like a, a life sign of the engines every, let's say, a couple of hours or every day or every week, depending on the preferences. And uh, we also help the large engine manufacturer to, to, to help troubleshooting yeah, in case um, there are uh, technical problems. Um, and with campaign management, we can um, enable software updates over the air and can do this also in a way um, that we can say all large engines in ships, for example, or certain types of ships um, should receive a, a specific uh, software update. Um, the benefits here really are that this enables uh, many, many more use cases also uh, in the future. Um, the large engine manufacturer, they have remote device and fleet management capabilities, and it also helps them to save time and cost um, for, um, yeah, via automating uh, uh, certain uh, processes and, and also to reduce uh, labor cost here. Um, next. So um, what we did here in the project, I mentioned it already, um, we provide um, the, the hardware. So there is an edge gateway coming from Bosch. Um, this large engine manufacturer is um, yeah, purchasing about 1 million of these uh, gateways uh, in, in a period uh, of seven years. Um, we provide the Bosch IoT suite services. Um, we have also a key management system by our sister company, eScript. Um, which uh, is, is sort of crucial uh, in, in all types of IoT um, environments, I would say. When we talk about software updates, we want to ensure um, that um, a software update can be trusted, for example, or the telemetry data from um, the large engine can be trusted. Yeah? Um, and we also provide uh, various uh, software development and implementation services here. Main use cases are um, connectivity. So here um, we usually um, integrate with Canvas. Um, again, this could be um, the large end. I mean, for the large engine, um, that that could be uh, various types of uh, sensors if you want to measure things like uh, heat or vibration and so on. Um, it we also could connect to other subsystems inside, uh, for example, a special vehicle or the ship um, to even you know, offer additional services here. Um, device management, I already mentioned it. Um, I won't go into the details here again. Um, firmware updates, again, very, very crucial. And then um, the fact that uh, we can manage the fleet with all its um, differences, right? So types of uh, uh, environments it is being used, like I said, could be ships, could be vehicles, could be something else, um, but also the difference uh, differences in, in their uh, software environments, right? So they may have very different features um, depending on the type of environment, depending on uh, the specific customer requirements and so on. And, and this uh, uh, needs to be managed in a way um, that uh, we can ensure um, uh, reliable operation um, of the entire system. Next, please. Yeah, so this is just uh, an example, uh, or this is basically a high level view um, how how this project architecture uh, looks like. Um, again, um, we have here on the bottom the Bosch Edge gateway um, with uh, Canvas uh, interface uh, that connects to the different subsystem inside the large engine. Um, we um, connect to the Bosch IoT suite to allow device management. Um, operation software updates uh, operations or to uh, send uh, telemetry data into the cloud to enable uh, condition monitoring or maintenance uh, um, use cases. 
Um, as I said, uh, key management uh, uh, is coming from, from eScript to ensure um, yeah, secure operation um, of, of all this. Yeah? And uh, in the future, there are um, obviously various uh, third party services that could be made available um, through this architecture. Next. Yeah, so why Bosch IO in such a uh, context? Um, so I would uh, start um, with what we call question zero. Um, so we are aiming for long lasting relationships. We want to ensure um, that, uh, or we, want, we, we actually challenge um, the business model with our consulting um, services. Um, because really it's not just um, doing a, a project, it's to help our customers to, to scale their business uh, um, in their digital transformation journey. Um, and then um, there are not many uh, other companies like Bosch uh, that can uh, provide end-to-end -end solutions from uh, sensors, uh, from other types of uh, hardware, uh, gateways, uh, edge devices, um, up until um, um, the cloud uh, connectivity and, and, and corresponding cloud services. And uh, yeah, with uh, the global view of, of, of Bosch in, in our background, um, we have access um, to know-how uh, around all types of hardware and, and software uh, uh, expertise uh, across the globe yeah? um, for, for all kinds of um, uh, domains. Um, and um, so as, as uh, Joshua mentioned earlier, um, so we we really live um, the open ecosystem approach. Um, so most of our activities in, in IoT are driven also in the open source community. Um, these we make available um, um, in a scalable uh, way um, in form of cloud services, for example, but also uh, various edge services. Um, and it, it's really um, also to allow our customers um, to expand over time. Yeah. Um, so it's not, um, and, and again, I think this is important. This is not to think um, either with a, whether it's in a car or for large engine manufacturers, any other kind of environment, um, IoT software is not static. Yeah, I mean, you, you know this uh, on, on your smartphone, you get like every day a couple of software updates. Um, this may not be so extreme in, in, in our cases, but uh, um, expandability um, um, and, and introducing new features, introducing software updates for security purposes and so on is, is really um, um, crucial and doing it Kai, in the right way. Kai, I need, to, I need to quickly jump in here. We yep. only have a few few minutes left. So um, maybe maybe if you can wrap up quickly so we can- All right, yeah, then the uh, last, last slide then, sorry, um, is just to give you uh, um, an overview of our adoption map. Um, in the domains we are active, we have about 10 million connected devices today. And uh, with this, um, I hand over back to you. Sorry for the delay. Yeah, no worries. Um, uh, thank you very much, Kai. Thank you very much, uh, Joshua. Very, very good, very interesting presentations. And we've received a lot of questions already on both. Uh, and I would uh, urge you to um, put other questions in the Q&A. We unfortunately don't have a lot of time left and we have a small section here on Outlook, which I will make very short because I wanna get to some of these questions. There are some really interesting ones. So I, I will not go into every detail of Outlook. I have three messages that I wanna um, make sure that you see from our side um, for in terms of Outlook. I'm gonna not go into the details here. The message I wanna, I wanna bring to you, we all had issues with, with COVID-19, the re resulting slowdown, Everyone we talk to believes in the digital acceleration. I have some comments here on the right. So there is a consensus, IoT and also Edge is going to thrive once we are back to somewhat of a normal situation, hopefully soon. That's message number one. Message number two, uh, Edge computing is indeed, we had to, uh, is indeed um, uh, sought, sought after. Um, it was one of the, partially one of the trends during the lockdown because companies invested in IT resources. And 
paper use for edge hardware was a, a big topic. I can't go into the details now. Message number three, uh, and this is not edge specific, but this is important. We had a lot of discussion today about the technology. Every time we talk to people and ask them what makes this implementation of these things successful, they don't talk about technology. Technology is only one of 10 success factors. And um, it's about people, training, uh, use cases, value proposition, change management, buy-in from executives. These are the things that if you are working on these initiatives, you need to invest a lot of time in. It's not only about the technology. Those are the things I wanted to share. Um, now, if you want to um, learn more, there's three things. First of all, we have another edge computing webinar, which talks more about the thicker edge in two weeks. We're, put, we're pasting the link right now into the chat window if you want to sign up for that. Um, from IoT analytics side, if you're interested in some of the research we presented, I'm happy to uh, do a session with you, 30 minutes, tell me what report you're interested in. I'll do a walkthrough, do some screen sharing. Uh, again, there's a link in the chat right now, iotanalytics.com discover. You can send us a message and uh, we'll get back to you. And the same for Bosch. You can scan the QR code right now uh, to make a, have a meeting with Joshua. You can also book a meeting based on the link that we just posted into the chat. Uh, and with that, uh, let's get to Q&A. Um, we have received a lot of questions. We don't have a lot of time. Uh, so I'll dive straight in with a question to the to the Bosch team. We've had a couple of questions on the topic of security, and I want to get to that first, maybe. Um, so the question is, how do you ensure security in your edge solution? And then there were two specific questions, on one on decentralized PKIs and one of uh, 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 photo security. So um, Yozo and Kai, maybe, maybe if I can start with you on these two, and please be very um, crisp and ve very short in your answers. Yeah, so let's give it a try. But I, I'm thankful for the question because, of course, um, security is a huge topic. So I would say um, how we ensure security at the edge. There are maybe four aspects also considered in our um, approach. So there's once the ability to configure kind of your permissions and the components, right? So based on, for example, custom conditions. Uh, we do support uh, secure communication to the gateway runtime, uh, for example, with data encryption. I think also crucial, maybe another thing is um, the certificate management and also the, the capability to rework or to update some certificates. But also the thing that, which you have mentioned before, I think an integration to a um, key management service provider or using a public key infrastructure or even to use some hardware security models, um, this is how we do it in the end. Uh, very good. Um, and sorry, one thing because it's coming up again and again. We are sharing the recording of this uh, with everybody who attended. Um, very important. Before we go to the next questions, we are coming to uh, the end of this in two minutes, and we would like to hear from you uh, how the webinar was for you. So uh, Alice is, is pasting a survey link into the chat. We would really appreciate if you could take that one minute. It's four questions. Just tell us how we did and what what we can improve. Let's get to the next question. There's a bunch of questions on how to use uh, Bosch IoT Suite and the Edge components. Uh, uh, starting with um, how do I get started um, uh, and some more in-depth questions. So um, Kai Yuzo, if you want to quickly uh, uh, take that. Yeah, to make it really short, um, of course, I'm happy if you scan the QR code to help you on that. But if you go to our website, um, you will find for all our services and packages a free plan. And if you book or subscribe to the free plan for the asset communication package or device management package, you um, can download actually from there um, everything you would need. But if you need help, I'm, I'm happy to go with you through all these processes. Good. Uh, last question, maybe then for Kai. There were a bunch of questions on your connected car use case, uh, specifically on how in that example security is provided by a FOTA. Um, is FOTA um, also, is the FOTA for existing controllers in the car also controlled by Bosch? Um, uh, what type of DDS is being used? There are a lot of technical questions that we had on that side. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So uh, with respect to the security aspect, um, I, I would say it depends, right? So, I mean, Bosch has the capability to provide uh, uh, security uh, software yeah, or to enable security. Um, 
but in the end, it depends on the OEM. Um, so we work with, uh, for example, Daimler to do software updates in cars already for, I think, uh, more than 4 million vehicles. And, and basically, they sort of defined, uh, you know, how security is done. Yeah? Um, so they have a lot of, a lot of these in, in their control, if you want, right? Um, I mean, there is a flexibility. We are coming, we have come to the top of the hour. We will try to see if we can get back to some of you um, with answers to your questions uh, directly. Since we, I need to apologize, we, we, we didn't leave uh, enough time for Q&A at the end as, as we had planned to. So we'll try to get back to some of you. We, had, we received a lot of questions. Uh, right now, all I can say, if you filled out the survey, many thanks. Uh, um, we thank you for your attending the webinar. Uh, um, the, the questions that we've received show that this is a really interesting uh, topic. And so we, we hope you enjoyed it uh, and hope to see you next time uh, for another webinar, both on the Bosch and IoT Analytics side. Thank you very much uh, and bye bye. <clears throat> mm -hmm.